Uh, is that my screen visible? Yeah, your presentation is visible. OK, then it's top of the hour, so you can get started. OK, thank you. Welcome everyone uh, to the Light of Virtual Conference. Um, so and uh, so we are going to talk. Uh, we are going to see about how to use Microsoft Power Automate to enable the automation on legacy desktop application using the robotic process automation technology. So before we jump into our slides, so we have to try. Uh, I'll, I'll say thank to C Sharp Corner and uh, our sponsors for providing the great opportunity, and then. Also, uh, thanks to UNICEF uh, for the support. And uh, so, who are watching this, maybe uh, you can donate uh, to the UNICEF for our, our conference and also to uh, support for the UNICEF. Okay, so just please. Uh, and then uh, you can just you can also share your uh, feedback on the speaker by uh, scanning this or event by scanning uh, right hand side was here. Myself, Santa Kumar, and I'm a modern workspace consultant. I'll do the Office 6 phase stuff, Microsoft Power Platform stuff. So I have done doing for more than uh, 13 years, and I'm a CSOP Corner MEP for uh, continuously I'm, uh, receiving five times. And I'm a Microsoft Community Contributor, and also to the open source contributor, contributing to PNP and uh, Office 6 phase, Office 6 phase CLI in GitHub. So and you can also catch me on uh, in the name of KTS Kumar in Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. So what is a robotic process automation? This is nothing but a technology of uh, creating and training a software bot to emulate the human interactions. Okay, and then based on the human interactions, it will automate the business processes. So this is nothing but it just imitates the humans, humans actions and enable that on a digital platform in a sequence, in a sequence of steps to generate the valuable output. And this helps us to automate a lot of repetitive tasks, a lot of complex tasks to reduce the human efforts. OK, so we'll see how the Microsoft Power Automate, which uses this robot robotic process technology to enable this kind of automations. So currently at the Microsoft Power Automate, uh, previously they had automated flow for uh, just automating the entire flow of uh, if, if the application has an API and all. And then instant flow, you can just click on or uh, click on the button or that will trigger that uh, the actual automation flow. And schedule for you can just schedule the automation uh, everywhere, anything uh, for, from a device to automate the flow, actual flow of uh, that is workflow process or business process. The business process flow is nothing but it's just a, a sequence of steps you have to follow that we can enable to automate the certain things. But in addition to that, Microsoft have added UA flow. There's a UA flow which brings the robotic process automation capabilities to the power automate because this enables us to automate any repetitive task in Windows and web applications because this will track all the human actions and playbacks those by capturing what are all the actions, actions we have done by clicking or clicking the mouse or just entering some text in a keyboard or inputting any text to the text boxes or some uh, uh, input uh, controls. Okay, okay, and this this UI flow which enables us to automate anything which may which uh, which uh, application doesn't have any API and which is very complex in uh, doing a lot of uh, human actions. So this UI flow which uh, easiest that way. 
and then because this this will record all the human actions and automate the playback of man manual steps on legacy software because we microsoft and uh, recommends this ua flow for uh, running uh, this automating the repetitive task on the, mostly on legacy software because the legacy software doesn't have any i think in decade uh, previous decade application doesn't have uh, uh, much apis to access uh, access to uh, web services or the api so during the, uh, those applications we can use the ua flow for automating those repetitive tasks on those softwares and mostly uh, microsoft have recommended to use a ua flow to run the desktop and web applications that do not have apis available for automation because if there is the api is available we can use other flows like automated flow instant flow because that contains lot of actions within it and that by using the tag and we call any api and we can run that flow but this ua flow which mostly we can use it on legacy software or any applications which doesn't support much uh, api so this ua flow which brings that robotic process uh, automation feature to the microsoft power automate so and this ua flows so what is what are what we can do with ua flows we can automate the two type of applications mostly desktop application and web applications the desktop application mostly this ua flow which will enables to run on which mostly compatible with the windows 10 pro and windows server 2016 and 2019 machines because this uh, mostly this ua flow which contains uh, the net, the dll or the code which mostly run on these servers so we can use this ua we can run this ua flow on these uh, desktop machines and then for the web applications we can also create a web uh, automator web applications even though those web applications supports the api but the some previous uh, a lot of uh, the legacy based applications or if you want to just do some automation work in your websites so that we can do with uh, creating a ua flow for web application mostly we have this web application ua flow which will compatible with uh, the microsoft edge chromium version and the uh, latest version of google chrome okay so the desktop ua flow so uh, as as we saw we have two type of applications we can create with ua flow desktop and web flow so how we can create the desktop ua flow so there are two options available there are two tools is available in ua flow under the microsoft power automate one is ua flow record app and another one is win automation the so ua flow the uh, two use the ua flow record app we have to install ua flow installer that is setup.microsoft.powerautomate.uaflow.exe and after installing that we have to enable ua flow browser extension to the appropriate uh, browser that those browser extension also available from the store microsoft edge store or google chrome store so once you enable it you have to launch the record app because once it's installed the record app it gets uh, uh, gets start running so by using uh, the browser in the browser itself we can just launch the record app to the ua flow so once the record app is launched we have to record the human actions and then after capturing the human actions we have to just save it to the ua flow that's it the ua flow record app uh, ua flow is created using the ua flow record app next one is win automation win for for using that win automation we have to install this ua flow installer and then we have to create a gateway okay which enable which enables this attended rpa because if you have uh, if you are using the paid or trial edition uh, trial edition of microsoft power automate attended rpa you will get this win automation tool so once you get it you can install and you have to install this win automation to your desktop machine and then you have to create your on premise gateway 
Okay, in the Microsoft Power Automate site itself, you have to install, you, you have to download the on premise gateway and then enable it. Okay, after that, you have to sign into Win Automation tool, which you have already installed. So after that, you have to run that Win Automation. You have to create a process inside of Win Automation tool and then run the process. And then you can save it. That gets saved to Power Automate. So that's it. So these are the, the tools, tools it's used to use us to enable the desktop automation. Next one is Web UI Flow. So we saw two tools is available for desktop automation. But for Web UI Flow, we can have Selenium ID tool. So we can use this tool to enable to automate the web flow. So if you want to automate, maybe if you want to capture all the images uh, from the site, you have uh, open in the Chrome or you open in the Edge, or if you want to get all the search records which you have. Uh, uh, which you have searched for certain keyword. So if you want to capture those things, automatically you want to capture those things and then you want to send it to some mail or send it to some uh, mobile ID. So this web UI flow definitely helps. And if you want to just uh, call say the currency for the current, every day you can create a scheduler, scheduler auto, automated flow to launch this web UI flow to capture the daily uh, currency rate that's also possible. We can use it. Use this web UI flow all that. So to enable this web, to create a web UI flow, we have to install UI flow installer, and then we have to install and enable the Selenium IDE browser extension. This enables us to automate the or capture the elements within a website, and then it helps us to automate also. So once this is enabled, we have to launch the Selenium recorder. In this will open the Selenium recorder application. From there, you can start recording or the start recording from Selenium IDE. So once the whatever you have, uh, you whatever the actions you want to capture, capture it. After capturing it, you can stop recording from Selenium IDE. Once it stops, it automatically gets saved and then updated to the Microsoft Power Automate VA flow. These are the two applications and then how to create these flows. So let's see how to create a desktop, how to how to automate a legacy uh, application, actions, actions related to legacy applications. So let's move on to demo now. So let me share. Okay, so I have I have uh, uh, I have already logged into office.com and here you can see uh, the list of apps available in my office uh, is to be tenant. Let me select the power automate. Okay, so uh, currently I'm in a power automate uh, home page. And then I'm going to go to just click create. You can see the list of uh, flows under the Power Automate. These are the list of uh, the flows we can create using the Microsoft Power Automate. So I'm going to select this UA flow. You can see there are two applications, desktop app and web app. Click on the desktop app. Click next. You have to give some uh, name for the flow. Be a uh, light up UA flow demo. Click on next. You have to give uh, um, because uh, currently I uh, am uh, maybe we have a scenario like uh, you want to migrate some legacy software contents to the SharePoint. Okay, let's take that example. So it has a lot of appointment information in it. So we have to capture all the appointment information and move it to SharePoint. So so uh, we have some we have uh, information about some uh, 
appointment id so okay based on that appointment id we have to capture the patient information and then we have to move that information to sharepoint so i am having the input as appointment id and then and think some appointment id number and just giving so click on next so this is a, a start your ua flow so below to that we have to click new step and then we can see the two tools available okay under the ua flow for the desktop the recorder and window automation just click on the recorder click on the record app action now we can see we have to download and install the ua flows installer after installing it we have to enable the browser the extension right i have already installed and uh, have the browser extension in my uh, microsoft edge i have to enable it so just go to my uh, extension section so and then i am enabling this enable extension once uh, it gets any enabled you will come here maybe i it so it automatically gets sync but it's not doing that so what i'm doing is i'm just closing this the entire the browser and then i'm going to re login okay so just close this uh, this is a sharepoint site here uh, we are going to store that information the appointment id patient id and gender so we'll see that later so let's close this and then let me open it we of us logging Okay, then select the power automate. Same create we flow the stop app. Next, so before that we have to ensure this uh, UA flow service is running or not. If it is not run, we have to start it manually. So because if it doesn't run. we are uh, unable to launch the recorder app so just ensure this this is running select a desktop app next and then write up demo or p next appointment id is pst appointment so id uh, which is available in that application so that i have just copied and pasted here click next the same step new step the click on the recorder the choose an action and then select the recorder app so we have enabled that uh, extension so that we got this launch recorder button so just click on this launch recorder just wait for a few seconds you can see now there is a record uh, recorder app is uh, open in the top of the screen okay so if you want to just run this maybe i'll i'll minimize this browser so there is a legacy of Uh, application is there okay so and then just use start sorry so just click on this record to start recording the human actions I have just selected it and then just select the title of that application a uh, wait until that blue box should come so then only the application captures it so just click on this and i have we have already have input so i am just entering that input here okay so it's and then 
search click on the search you can get the information so to get the output just click at uh, this appointment id and then get select the text on screen click on that uh, number and then get appointment id uh, as output save and then if you want to get a patient id just select click on the output select text on screen then select the text box it's automatically the value is captured and we have to provide the output name variable name patient id okay and then click save so to capture the gender um click go to output select text on screen click on that gender text box you can we have got it. gender click save so we have three output variables now once it is done just click on done so okay so this this is captured now so once this is captured you can see it here launch legacy appointment app left click so what are the actions we have done so that is visible here that is selecting the title bar so selecting the title bar means we are just focusing to that application so after that we have selected clicked on uh, the particular text box and then we have given the input to the text box so there is some uh, problem in it because it's not captured the actual uh, one so i think we have to uh, repeat the same thing once again so because it's it's not captured that particular text box so it's it's uh, it's select on that uh, the recycle bin icon so i think we have to just uh, otherwise we have to delete this particular one and then we have to redo it so instead of that we can just delete the entire option and then we can start from scratch click on new step record record app launch recorder okay so i think before this we will close this open this launch app click the record and then select the title bar Select the text box. Give the appointment ID uh, value here. Click on the search. You got output. Click on the appointment ID value. Select. Select text on screen. Appointment ID. Then select text on screen. and then patient id save and then get click on the outputs select text on screen click on that and then click the gender text box got it gender save it then done so once it's done just close the application so i think uh, we have got a successful now yeah i think in the input text input we have uh, got a screen shot which shows that we have selected that text box once this done this this is what uh, we can ensure it so everything is uh, we have successfully got it okay so and then let us uh, if you want to test it so maybe uh, we can add in the end of that we have to add a close action so it automatically close that application the open application close application that is yeah so that's it click on the next so we have captured the three outputs click next so this is a one maybe i'm just giving the six test now click on the text test so i am not doing anything right now so i have just uh, uh, 
taken my uh, hand from the keyboard and mouse. So you see, the soap and the application gets opened, and uh, the mouse, uh, the mouse box selected the title or the focus. It it focuses the application, and then it automatically enters the given input. After that, it will automatically click on the search, and then it captures each data. And then it automatically closes it. You see that? Just wait for uh, just few seconds. Okay, now it's selecting the patient ID. Uh, it's copying that patient ID information, and then it moves to it's it moves it moves the focus to the gender text box and capture that information. You wait for it, but it won't take uh, much time. So, because in each uh, for each action, the my uh, the UA flow takes some few seconds to run it. So it it waits for a few seconds. You can see uh, everything is run successfully, and then you got this output. Maybe mm. it's not showing here. Okay, maybe. Uh, now you can see the output text one appointment ID. This is patient ID and then this is gender. Then save and exit. Yeah, that's it. We have automated the, the human actions using this UA flow. So because this kind of applications, Windows desktop application doesn't have API. So because uh, mostly uh, uh, the clients also uh, uh, didn't provide access to those uh, those environment or the where they store the data or uh, maybe uh, that gets uh, trickier they, the, the data gets trickier trickily saved so we couldn't be able to capture it so for those kind of applications we can use this UA flow to capture that okay so we have just automate this human actions so now we'll see uh, the next one uh, we'll move on to slide Just a second. So, um, okay, I'm unable to minimize my uh, desktop. Just give us a second. I've just missed that. So let's move on to the presentation. I just want to show one slide now. Okay. So now we have done that uh, the uh, automation of human interactions. But if you want to automate uh, those actual human interactions from outside, so that's how we can do it. So for that, the Microsoft Power Automate provided two options. One is attended and another one is unattended. Okay. So these two options, two automation options, enables us to run the Human uh, run this UA flow from other you know, other uh, Microsoft Power Automate flows. Like we can use the instant flow or button flow or to trigger this uh, UA flow, or we can use a scheduled flow to trigger this uh, this UA flow, or we can use automated from somewhere else or sending email through the send through the uh, email. Also, we can trigger this uh, UA flow. That's where it comes attended and unattended. Because whatever, whenever we want to run this UA flow, we have to use some desktop to run this application. 
okay so first one is attended attended means we have to uh, we have to run the particular ua flow on a active active session that is the user should always open that uh, windows uh, windows environment so that this attended flow that ua flow which configured with attended can run otherwise it can't run because it, it always the uh, run in the user session only so this user session always should be active if you want to run this attended ua flow so and then this will be always useful to automate ad hoc repetitive task or the user the human interaction somewhere needed or human need to monitor those actions do do for those ua flows we can use the attended for unattended it's simple so if uh, no need uh, the user no need to log into the system so if you trigger that it automatically the ua flow get automatically log into the user session and then it runs or runs every uh, runs whatever the human actions need to do it will it will runs and then it automatically close the application and then it automatically sign out from that windows environment windows session so during that time no one should log into that particular target machine so and then this will be useful for fully automated tasks so because if you have if you have a separate vm and then you can run any kind of uh, automation task that is ua ua flow related task this for those things you can use this unattended ua flow automation option so we'll see how to do that so let i i'm going to just create a button flow from that button flow that is instant flow by using that instant flow that if i click on that button it will trigger that ua flow so whatever the ua flow we have created that will automatically get triggered from outside of that particular ua flow let's say this i'm i'm going to share my Share my remote desktop on screen. Okay, so we are in our environment. And then I'm going to my flows. So because I have already created a sample uh, demo app. Okay, so this is a but an instant flow app. So let me show you how to create that instant flow. Just click on new flow and then click on instant from blank. You have to give some uh, demo light. Demo a flow automation demo. Click on this manual trigger manually trigger your flow and then click create. This will create it. In here, we have to add our actions. So after click on that button, whatever we need to do, so we have to add the steps here. So I have already created some sample flow. So I'm going to use this. So this is a light wave flow attended automation demo. So I'm going to use the attended because we have already logged into the system. So I have just uh, created this. So we want to just uh, use this attended automation or unattended automation. So we have to create an on-premise gateway. For the on-premise gateway, we have to install the on-premise gateway uh, uh, from here. Maybe I'll show you that. So under the data, you can see gateways. Click on that gateways. And because in the gateway, we have to provide uh, uh, the machine domain name, username, and credentials, that is password information to that. So that it will allow it, it automatically log in to the system and then it will run this human access. So just click on this new get, gateway. So it redirects to that. You have to install this on-premise data gateway in your machine. So I have already installed it, so I'm just closing it. So here, after installing it, you have to just create it and you should have active one here. I'm going to my flows. Edit this light up UA flow attended automation demo. Click on this. So I have already just uh, created and then I have uh, initially have pro provided an initial variable 56429110. And then I'm giving some loops. So I want to just run for 
some three times or two times. So I have added like this. You can see uh, the variables. I have added the two to the appointment ID. So I have I want to look to two times, and then I have just checked do until the appointment ID should be greater than this uh, appointment loops. So it, it it will run at three times. So and then incremental variable. So I, I each in each uh, running I am just incrementing this appointment ID so that it checks with this appointment loops and run it. Okay. So here I'm going to add an action to call that UA flow. So UA flow. Run a UA flow for the desktop. Click on it. So you can see the UA flow, what UA flow you want to run it. So I'm going to select the light up RPA demo. Click on that and then run mode. There are two options, attended and unattended. I'm going to select an attended. And appointment ID, I am going to give it from the appointment ID. Okay, we have given the input also as well. Okay, so once it is done, if you want to save it to SharePoint, I'm just moving up. Okay, and then I'm going to add to save it to SharePoint. So just add an action and then SharePoint. Okay, and then create a new uh, list item. Just click on this create item. Select site. I have this. Maybe I will check it there. So legacy appointments. So this is that. Uh, this is that list we are going to use. Select the list name, legacy appointments. Okay, and then title. We are going to use the output appointment ID to the appointment title, patient ID to patient ID, and then gender selection gender. These are the values is coming from this Rania UA flow for the desktop. So once everything is done, just click save. Okay. Once it is saved, let me. We can test it by triggering that button. So I'll perform the trigger action. Just select this. I'll perform the trigger action and save and test. Just click on it. Okay. This enables us to check. First, it's uh, connecting to that VA flow. It's connecting to that gateway. You can see this uh, gateway I uh, have used. And then the SharePoint, then click on continue. Run flow. And then don't uh, do anything in the uh, system so that uh, this application gets automatically, it gets triggered, triggered that, and it automatically runs its uh, UA flow which you have created. So just wait for this uh, few seconds, it get uh, op the application gets open, and then it will add the uh, details to the SharePoint list will for we will wait for the just few seconds so the same way we can just automate because uh, currently this is uh, a legacy application i want to migrate some legacy content to the sharepoint so like the same way we can also add some information to the legacy application using this so if you want to just capture some legacy application information or the uh, to maybe for preparing some report that also it, it will be very useful to that. So it's triggered one time and it's catching this data. So once it's captured, it will close us that application and it will open the application one more time. So instead of that, you can still, you can just uh, modify that UA flow action to open always open the application and then you have you can just do the changes or if you want to do some action that that we can do that we have to just modify it in the UA flow so it's just one time is completed so 
So it's open and capture that information and closes it. So it, it, it go for the another one loop. So it open once again. You can see it's, it's open once again. You can in the you can see in the taskbar. You can see that application gets open. And now it's trying to focus to that application. Yeah, it's get focused. If you run this in the unattended, so if you want to run for a million record, so the uh, million that the unattended session, if you if you run this in the unattended, unattended session, definitely helpful because it's uh, the million times it will automatically get open and then it's automatically close it. So once if, if you want don't want to close it, you have to just modify it in the DA to actions to not close that application. Maybe we can create a two, uh, uh, two, uh, two access to UA flow actions and the UA flow. So and then that is two recorder app. Uh, not that create two uh, recorder app actions and the UA flow that that will do it. So it's added one more time. So you can see 911 and then it's good search and then it gets a save save those items. So we'll wait for one more time. So until it gets open, let me. OK, it should get open, so I'm not focusing anything. So because if you interacted or whenever that UA flow runs, if we if we interacted or if we changed anything and the actions, it gets uh, confused. The UA flow gets confused. Maybe this kind of uh, limitations get uh, gets uh, solved in future. So you can see the another one 12 10 11 12 9 10 9 11 9 12. This is the third time it's running. Once it's captured and closed, I think everything uh, gets completed. So if it's uh, for this for this demo, I've just created a, some sample application, but if we have the yeah, actual the production based legacy application definitely it will be very useful to catch a number of data. So currently I've just captured the three uh, three values, but if you want to capture more information, this UA flow definitely helps you on that. So I think it's captured and then it's closed. I think we'll go to the SharePoint site and we'll see uh, the two items get saved here. This uh, first is Okay, maybe the third one gets still gets running. Wait for the second. Okay, let me click on this done. You see the UA flow runs successfully. And you can see this the three times it's run. Okay, one to Lavan since created in a SharePoint term and then have this go to three. You can see this also is created in a SharePoint list. You can see that's it. So so by the way, instead of a click on that insert button, we can also trigger trigger through sending the email or just messaging uh, via thing or uh, if, if you have some other automation uh, actions or some other automation triggers, you can use that to just trigger this VA flow and complete this automation. So I'm just so let me share my PowerPoint. So uh skips down, so any questions? So mm -hmm. a quiet yes. group today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think then if there is no questions we can just uh, 
Moving on to next slide. This is a closing note. So thank you uh, for the. Okay. Shall we close it or the? Yeah, yeah. If, if you don't no. have any further. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching uh, uh, this session, and uh, we'll, uh, I, I hope uh, we'll share this uh, video uh, later. And then uh, just if you want to learn more information on robotic process automation with uh, by Microsoft Power Automate, so you can just capture me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or uh, YouTube, and Google on the name of KTS Kumar. And also just uh, uh, tweet in uh, as light up to, to promote uh, our virtual console so that everyone can learn more information related to the technologies. So thank you. Thank you for providing this opportunity uh, for the CSOP Corner, uh, CSOP Corner uh, and then Tech Platform. Thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Great presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think I'm um, stop sharing. Thank you, Jason. Sure. I think that's all right. Yep. You're good. Yeah. Then thank you. Um, all right. Thank you. See ya. Bye.